you hear me? Ah, there we go. Hello, good morning. Um, I've been running about 20 minutes late, so for half an hour late. Um, I'm going to spend 20 minutes talking about the application of blockchain technology into, into markets. The, the thing for me around the application of blockchain is that it's going to affect every industry. So the challenge is, how do you decipher, how do you go about understanding what blockchain is? So maybe I can ask the audience, how many of you know what blockchain is? Have you heard about blockchain technology? A little bit. A little bit. Okay, well, that's fine. So I'm not going to have time to explain blockchain in detail, but what I'm going to try and do is explain what, how it can be used. So if we've seen, if, you know, what I'd like to do is put it into context. If you've seen the industrial revolutions that have happened over the last 100, 200 years, um, the last one was about the web. The last one was about mobile um, and being able to have scalable, powerful systems. You know, that's what's happened in the last 20 years. The web came along, the internet came along, and has transformed how we communicate and how we exchange information and potentially even how we exchange value. There we go. So where we are now is the, basically the start of the fourth industrial revolution. The application, not just blockchain, but the use of data, the use of IoT across every industry is going to transform every market and every business. And all of you have to think about how that's going to change your business and think about how that can help you transform. I was talking to some people in the audience today about some of the applications and some of the efficiencies. Now, given Saudi Arabia today and where you are in terms of the technology evolution, you have the opportunity to build these 21st century businesses and 21st century infrastructures that enable you to basically bypass what's happened in, in the West and in the US and in Europe where they have massive legacy systems and be able to build these new decentralized models. So, some or all of you will have seen these, these things. You hear the words, you hear you know, the, lots of marketing and media, you, you see a lot of big vendors talk about it, there's lots of news about all of these things. The challenge is always, what does this mean? And how do you connect in? How do you relate these things together to basically solve some business problems or re reinvent business models, or invent business models even? I'm going to focus on blockchain today because that's my talk, but you've got to remember blockchain sits in context. It's not just about application of blockchain technology. It's about combining these technologies together to build out new business models and how, how business is going to work in the future. So as part of application, applying blockchain into any industry in any market, it's looking at what's happening in, in all sorts of areas. This is just a diagram around the use of sensors and the use of data across every single market in every single industry. You can see where things were a few years ago and where things are going to go. These fourth generation platforms are going to transform every industry. So Neom is building a new city. You know, it's about building a huge smart city somewhere. Well, that's going to be enabled by IoT. It's going to be enabled by data. It's going to be enabled by blockchain to be able to use the data to be able to build business models. So simple examples. Being, paying for energy and decentralized energy models and paying for energy using decentralized models. That's, that's, that's kind of things that are going to happen. So just to go into the next level of detail, if you talk about smart cities specifically and think about the applications of blockchain, and I'm going to explain some of those. So for example, in smart retail, if you talk about loyalty programs, if you know about air miles or you know about other kind of loyalty programs, decentralized loyalty programs with a tokenized model are going to replace traditional centralized hub spoke models around loyalty. If you're going to do connected cars, electric cars, the challenge of creating energy and consuming energy around electric cars, how are you going to do that? So simple example, if you're producing decentralized energy through solar PV and through solar farms and clean tech, you, what's happening is that communities are building these around the world. So in the UK, which is where I'm from, London, in the UK, you're seeing lots of companies build solar farms. But, and they're not connecting to the centralized grid. So solar power, you know, coal-powered fire stations or nuclear power stations are frankly expensive and polluting to the atmosphere. Decentralized models and solar PV are already taking over. But the problem is, if you're going to move to electric cars, there has to be enough energy to generate it to be able to charge those cars. If you don't have a, a model to be able to have enough sufficient capacity to charge electric cars, well, it doesn't matter how many electric cars there are. But decentralized models 
are a problem in terms of how do you produce the energy and how do you charge for it and how do you pay for it? Well, the decentralized models will use blockchain technology to tokenize the unit of energy and be able to buy and sell that through all of the hundreds of communities of solar PV and battery storage that will exist and be able to pay for charging cars or, or actually powering your home. That's just one example. Smart industry, if you're talking about supply chains, if you're integrating a supply chain of any kind, so one of the things we're working on is the oil and gas supply chain. If you're integrating across 20,000 companies across the world, for example, enabling those companies that don't trust each other to be able to have a, a way of trading across that supply chain is a fundamental shift that's happening. This kind of thing has never been solved before. And there's lots more, but I won't, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll stop and move on to the next slide. So, the other thing to think about is actually how customers want to be served. You know, this is not only about back end, this is about saying how are you going to serve your customer? How are you going to make it easy for somebody who owns an electric car to get cheap electricity and charge it and be able to pay for it easily? How are you going to do banking? How are you going to get loans and mortgages? And if you've heard about crowdfunding, for example, using decentralized models around crowdfunding is something already that's happening. So if you've got a bunch of investors over here who have large amounts of capital, enabling them to invest in mortgages or loans or other kind of asset investment, the decentralized model is perfect for that, being able to manage that investment end to end. Healthcare is another one. Healthcare is huge. But what we have is, if you take electronic medical records right now, the challenge is electronic medical records in, uh, are stored on databases centrally, and the data is owned in nominally by you, but the data is stored in a hospital or, or some other place. Building decentralized models around storing electronic patient records enables the individual to control their data and manage and use that and perhaps even provide permission for third parties to use that data for, for, for example, research purposes. So the important thing here is the experience of the customer, whether it's an individual or a corporation, again, will become a lot more efficient using blockchain technology. So, just to give you a picture of why blockchain models are useful and what they can do, these are four things that you should think about when you're thinking about how you can apply blockchain to your business. One is the removal of intermediaries. So I talked about the payments and the, uh, and the financial services stuff. One of the biggest areas around supply chain, which is one of the biggest applications of blockchain, is the removal of intermediaries. In this case, the intermediaries are a bank in the transaction services business. So if you think about today what you do, if you're trading with one party and another party, you will use a bank to issue something like a letter of credit, for example. And the bank intermediates there, intermediates there, and what they do is they take a fee for just basically in enabling one party to not trust another party in providing intermediary, intermediary um, service at, at, at actually large expense. If you apply it with blockchain, if you use blockchain technology, you can remove that intermediary and provide the trust in the chain you can do the transaction in the chain and make the payment in the chain and exchange the title of the asset, for example, on the chain itself. Another benefit is using uh, blockchain technology for provenance, knowing where goods and services come from. So if you think about um, things like Dodd-Frank in the US or you talk about provenance in supply chain for any kind of food product or diamonds or whatever else, one of the biggest things we've seen in the consumer world is people want to know where their things have come from. Governments are starting to um, enforce provenance of goods and services. So in the pharmaceutical industry, one of the big things that happened uh, uh, last year, year before in India, was some pharmaceuticals were contaminated with some illegal, illegal ingredients. And a lot of people died in India. And because of the fact that there was no provenance of the drugs, no provenance of where the ingredients came from and where the drug supply chain was, there was a huge problem. Now, the governments have now issued um, um, regulation called the Falsified Medicines Directive, which is effectively around provenance in the drug supply chain. And you can apply that to every industry. Thirdly, trust in a network. Inherently, customers and part, um, companies who deal with each other don't trust each other. You can build a model that enables you to trust parties in your supply chain. And finally, security is a big one, right? If you can change a transaction or you can manipulate a transaction, you can change the data on a transaction, that's an inherent risk in any business that you do. If you use blockchain technology, you can enable trust in the network because one of the biggest areas is that the data that you put on the chain is immutable in the sense that it can't be changed. And if you try to change it, the blockchain falls over. So you can enable better security and trust. So everybody knows about Bitcoin. Bitcoin has never been hacked in, ten, in nine years. 
It's never been hacked or manipulated. Yes, there's other things at the periphery that have happened, but the network itself has never been broken. So you can see in nine years, if that's happened, you can see what the value could be uh, in using it in any kind of uh, real business activity. So some of the, some of the examples of where blockchain is already, already applying and already taking shape. In the financial services industry, um, in the capital markets, there's a huge consortium called R3 in, in, uh, with 60, 70 banks involved on replacing the current clearing and settlement model with a new model. That's going to take a lot of time over, uh, over in, in Europe and in the US because they've got legacy systems, they've got legacy processes, and the business case doesn't stack up. If you're building exchanges today here and in the Middle East and, and, and around the region, you have the opportunity to create these new kind of decentralized trading models. I've already talked about the electricity markets and what's happening there in the decentralized and decentralized models. Logistics inherently is about supply chain and integrating parties in the supply chain. I mentioned healthcare already. If you think about how healthcare and how data can be used to serve individuals better and research better, that could save huge amounts of capital, be able to open up data access to large amounts of people and actually improve people's lives. So what, what we do is, one of the biggest challenges is how do you figure out what the applications are and how do you figure out how to use this technology and others. And one of the things we use is this, this thing called the Connected Quadrant. And it's a framework to try and simplify the connectedness of all the different industries. I've already explained the connectedness between electricity markets and the automotive industry, which never existed before. So if you think about your business and you're thinking about how the world is going to change, think about these four things. What is a new business model going to look like? How, is, how are you going to make money? How is that going to transfer? And in any industry, think about how you make money is absolutely fundamental. But you've got to remember these decentralized models will change how you make money. Technology I've already talked about a lot. Um, the technology is, is as an enabler to delivering this change. And if you understand how the technology works, that helps you to figure out how your business model is going to work. Market models are fundamental again. If you think about the energy markets I've mentioned already, energy markets are already decentralizing. Forget about blockchain technology. Energy markets are decentralizing already. And you think about any industry, and you think about how a new market model will look. Think about decentralized models, and think about how, how your business will fit into that model and how you are going to make money. The final one is operating models. If you look at new economy businesses out there, over the last 20 years, the ones that are the hugest scale are new economy companies like Amazon and Facebook and Google. The way that they work is that they build their business on being agile and be able to experiment and change and test ideas. Rather than doing multi-year programs of work and spending tens of millions of dollars, or hundreds of millions of dollars, the operating model is to learn, test, learn, and fail fast. And if something works, scale it. So think about your business model and how you're going to adopt these technologies. Think about data. Data is fundamental to every business. If you don't fix data and how you use data in your business, then frankly, you'll be out of business. So these four things are fundamental to helping companies think about how the business is going to go forward. Blockchain is just one piece of capability and technology. But, but the, th the thing is that blockchain characteristics, hopefully you, you saw what I said earlier, are are fundamentally rethinking industries. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know if there's time for questions. Questions? Anybody have a question? I may be early. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go on, quick. No, the technology is ready. So the question here was, is the technology ready? And, and if, you, if, if you look at Ethereum, which is one of the blockchain networks, um, and, you look at, uh, uh, and you look at some of the others, these are running networks right now live. So...
So the question is, the question that, that, that you're asking is about the fact that Ethereum is one of the networks and it's about a currency. I would say that, that the currency just a, it's not a side piece, but it's, it's the mechanism by which you enact transactions on the chain. So yes, you can use Ethereum and, other, uh, and technology to actually do real business. So we're working on ventures that are actually doing that right now. So I, I wouldn't get distracted by the fact that cryptocurrencies are booming right now. For me, that's a distraction. You've got to think about fundamentally how business is going to change. And Ethereum is, is there's a huge community of developers building Ethereum software. There's a huge movement around implementing Ethereum and Hyperledger and some of the other technologies. Um, and we'll see real production stuff in 2018 implementing these technologies. Yes. Sorry. Yes, last one, I think. Go ahead. What are the things... So the question is, what are the things that blockchain is not suited for? So blockchain itself is about decentralized models. And it's about where parties who work together, uh, who work together but not necessarily are part of the same company, um, need to enact together. So anywhere where you have a centralized model or you have a hub-and-spoke model that doesn't require those kind of characteristics, blockchain doesn't apply. So what we're seeing right now is a lot of companies building their blockchain just to raise money, or they think blockchain is sexy, let's use it. And frankly, all those things will fail, right? So blockchain is applied to everything, it, but you've got to think about decentralized models. Some of the characteristics I mentioned in the talk hopefully enable you to start thinking about where, where it would apply and how it would apply. Two minutes. Got two minutes. One more question. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, we, need, we just need an examples. Yeah. Some examples, uh, simple examples to... Uh to understand the idea more. So I'll give you an example of something we're working on. So a real example of what we're working on right now. So, yeah. I don't know, buying something. I'm sorry? Buying something, buying. Buying something. Yeah. So let me give you an example. We're working on, uh, right now, we're working on liquid natural gas sector with people in the industry to integrate their supply chain. So what's happening in the liquid natural gas sector is it's moving from a long-term contract market to a spot market. So you need to be able to trade that LNG a lot more quickly. So what's happening is that there are, in this, in this industry, let's say for sake of argument, there are 20,000 companies who all deal with each other. Let's say, I don't know how many there are, but let's say it's 20,000. They all need to move LNG across the supply chain and provide services in that. They all need to be able to exchange title of assets. They all need to exchange money. They all need to exchange information about that particular asset. So what we're working on is en enabling that supply chain right now. Now, we're trying to buy, hopefully, the plan is by end of Q2 next year, we'll have a live transaction going through. But that's a real example of something that we're working on right now. I think we're done. Is anybody else? Yes, go ahead, quick. I've gone. I'll, I'll shout out the question. Savings and ah. okay, there we go. You've talked a lot about the savings that blockchain can bring into the different industries and operational efficiency. Yeah. What we have not heard about or we've never spoken about, and we were having discussion earlier on, was the cost of running this network and the cost of implementing it. Yeah. And the reg there's a cost of implementing it and yep. the regular ongoing costs. Yep. Yep. Does that at all oh. defeat the purpose of the? Uh, no. So what you're talking, I assume you're talking about the consumption of energy in the Bitcoin market, and the, it uses more energy in Belgium or something like that, right? Fine. Everybody For example. Talks, so everybody talks about that. The, the important thing is that the algorithms that are used, those algorithms are called the proof-of-work algorithms, which require lots of energy to process. But we're to, what will happen, and it's already happening in multiple networks, is moving to what's called a proof-of-stake model. And a proof-of-stake model is, in simple terms, a voting model, which doesn't require large amounts of energy to put a transaction on the blockchain. So already these changes are coming. So not on the Bitcoin network, that's not going to happen because fundamentally Bitcoin doesn't work like that. But in Ethereum and Hyperledger and others, they don't consume large amounts of energy to process transactions. It uses different kind of what they call consensus mechanisms to put transactions on the chain. So that problem is already being solved. It's already being solved. So the cost of running it is significantly lower than, than people have right now. I think that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>